Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I am Trace, this is episode 4 of 5 in our series on oceans all over the world. So far we've talked a little bit about how big the oceans really are and what we can get out of them and all sorts of cool stuff about how we map them, so make sure you watch those episodes. But today we're going to talk about how the oceans came to be. Or at least how we think they came to be, because it's kind of an open question. So obviously our survival hinges on the survival of the ocean. I mean, we all kind of get that if you've stuck around this far into the series, but we aren't even actually sure how the oceans got here in the first place. I mean, we don't even know. It's not like we were there. The leading theory for a long time, and still one of the leading theories, is that ice comets bombarded the Earth in the early days, like billions of years ago. And eventually those ice comets melted, because comets are made mostly of ice and dust. So the more comets that hit us, the more water we had. And today we have a lot of it, so that's a lot of comets. But a new popular study in 2014 by the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution says that the planet formed as what they call a wet planet, with water on the surface already. This was about 4.6 billion years ago, when all the worlds of the inner solar system were still forming. And at that time, there was a lot of bombardment happening in the inner solar system, so we might have had a lot of comets and a lot of other things hitting us. Then in the subsequent billions of years, more water arrived. And an alternate but supporting study to that suggests that researchers discovered a huge reserve of water located deep in the Earth, in the transition zone, they call it, which is between the upper and lower mantle. So if you've got the crust, you've got the upper mantle and the lower mantle, there's a bunch of water trapped in there, maybe 250 to 400 so miles below the Earth's crust. It's a lot of water, though, like three times the size of our oceans in terms of water volume. But don't picture like journey to the center of the Earth. You know, the temperature and pressure is so high in there that it's not like a pool of water, but we're talking there is water present, as in water molecules. Ideally, we would have an answer here, but we honestly don't. Scientists have no idea how we got all of this water. But water doesn't actually seem to be that rare in the universe. We're not entirely sure how we've got it, but if you've paid attention to Mars news, Mars has got water too. I mean, we've known for a long time that it has polar ice caps and maybe has water underneath the surface. But recent discoveries in the last few years have shown that there's water in the dirt. There's water maybe even flowing on the slopes of Mars. Highly salty water, but water nonetheless. Why is this important? Because water gives rise to life as we know it. Obviously that happened here on Earth, yay, but it also might happen on other planets. Basically, if you look for water, you find aliens. We've talked about this in previous series here on Test 2 Plus. Make sure you check those out. Because civilizations as we know it need water too. The most obvious place to find intelligent life like ourselves is to look for water. Based on what we know about biochemistry in the universe, an alien would need a solvent like water and one or more elemental units for its structure like carbon. You know, obviously we're biased because we're carbon-based life that likes water, but hey, no judgment. You do you, aliens. Solvents are important to enable chemical reactions inside of the body that would be a xenobiology, I guess, as well as physically transporting materials around said body. So on Earth, we love us some liquid solvent, obviously of water. Find the liquid water, maybe we'll find the aliens. Could be wrong entirely, of course, because xenobiology is just like that. But Water and potentially life on other planets could be pretty close to us. Jupiter's moon Europa is covered by ice. And inside of that ice is water, or so they think. They think so because this moon Europa has tidal energy created by the giant planet that it orbits. It's being crushed and then expanded and crushed again by Jupiter's gravity. And that movement heats up the inside of the planet. There might be 10 times the depth of Earth's oceans on the surface of Europa. And scientists believe that hydrothermal vents created by the heat of that compression and expansion could exist at the bottom of those oceans. And hydrothermal vents also exist here on Earth, which is pretty amazing. And we find a lot of alienish life near those hydrothermal vents. That heat and the minerals from the internal parts of the Earth that are spewing out is like the perfect soup for life. We might find it right here in our own solar system. That would be insane. We've got missions going there soon. But basically, understanding extreme life on Earth 
the bottom of our oceans in places like Antarctica can help us find and understand life elsewhere in the galaxy. Literally the first video I ever did for discoverynews.com was about new species that they had discovered around hydrothermal vents in Antarctica. We're looking for this now. It's super awesome, and it's why we explore the deep ocean. Oh, I love it. If you look at the fact that scientists supposedly discovered the largest reservoir ever in the universe, the universe may be way wetter than we thought. They found a gigantic black hole that's spewing out a cloud of water in the middle of the universe. And NASA says the amount of water found in this massive cloud is 140 trillion times all the water on all of the world's oceans. It's a lot of water. That could supply then, if you think about it, 140 trillion Earth-sized planets with the same amount of water that we have. They're bigger, you know, a few less, but whatever. It's math. Sounds great. We got to go find those. But tomorrow we're going to kind of come back to the oceans here on Earth. So we're going to talk a little bit about what happens if we destroy our oceans. Because, you know, there are a lot of planets out there that might have water, but we've only got this one. So we should probably make sure that it's okay, right? It's pretty important. Make sure you keep coming back to Test Tube Plus and subscribe so you get all of our videos. Let us know down in the comments if you have another theory as to how we got oceans, because maybe you do. I don't know. I definitely had some ideas before I read the comet theory, which seems a little far-fetched. But hey, science, it's open to interpretation for everybody. Also, come find me on Twitter. I'm at Trace Dominguez, and you can find the show at Test Tube. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we will see you tomorrow on Test Tube Plus. Thank <laughs> you.